Jesus was born into this world and died on the cross to offer salvation to people everywhere. Nobody is excluded from his invitation. The true meaning of Christmas is much more than presents, gifts, Christmas trees, and pretty lights. It is the reminder that everyone is welcomed into the family of God, no matter where they come from. The story of Ruth, one of Jesus' non-Jewish ancestors, makes that clear. Ruth didn't have it easy. After several years of marriage, her husband had died, leaving her in a major predicament. As a woman at that time, she was deeply disadvantaged financially. Women of the era were heavily reliant on the men in their lives for financial survival. With no husband and no children, Ruth had no one to provide for her. She was at the very bottom of society with few options. Her sister-in-law, Orpah, was in the same boat, as her husband had also died. To make things even worse, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, was also widowed and could not support her. In fact, Naomi was in dire need of help herself. It would have been easy for Ruth to give in to despair and look for a way to cut corners or compromise. But Ruth was a woman of character and immense loyalty. When Naomi decided to return to her homeland of Judah from Moab, where they had been living, Ruth's dedication to her mother-in-law persuaded her to take a massive leap of faith. Ruth 1, 8 to 11 sets the scene as Naomi is headed back to Judah, but attempts to persuade her daughters-in-law to go home to their ancestral homes there in Moab. Let's read what it says. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you and your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons? Who could become your husbands? At this point, it would have been completely understandable if Ruth had decided to take Naomi's advice and head home. It certainly was the more practical option. But Ruth rejected that easy way out. Both Ruth and Orpah wept out loud as Naomi urged them to go home. But what happened next made all the difference. Ruth 1, 14 to 19 spells it out. Let's read it together. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. Naomi couldn't possibly ask for a more loyal daughter-in-law. It was clear Ruth would not leave her side. This was family loyalty at its best. As the two arrived in Bethlehem, Ruth went to work right away to support both of them, picking up leftover barley from the harvest that was underway. Ruth gathered barley in the fields that belonged to Boaz, Naomi's relative. She showed herself to be very industrious and determined. Boaz noticed Ruth quickly. He found out she was working to support Naomi. He respected her devotion to her mother-in-law and was impressed with Ruth's work ethic. This was a young woman who made no excuses for herself and who refused to wallow in self-pity or to go around begging for a handout. Ruth clearly didn't think this work was above her. She was doing what she had to do to provide. Ruth 2, 11 and 12 reads, Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, 
the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Boaz decided to be kind to Ruth, promising her safety and giving her food and drink during the workday. He hooked her up so she could gather directly from the sheaves and even gave her extra grain on top of that. Ruth 2, 15 and 17 has the details. Let's read it. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men. Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. Things were about to get even more exciting. Boaz had the status of guardian redeemer for the family of Naomi. This role was fulfilled by a close relative who had the responsibility to help a relative who had fallen on hard times. Guardian redeemers were supposed to marry childless widows to carry on the family name. Hearing about the kindness of Boaz, Naomi got into matchmaker mode. Boaz was clearly kind and generous, and it didn't take a genius to see. He had taken an interest in Ruth. Naomi talked Ruth into appealing to Boaz for marriage. As Boaz was a recognized guardian redeemer for the family of Elimelech, Naomi's late husband, Ruth could legitimately ask Boaz to marry her and continue Elimelech's family line. Naomi coached Ruth on what to do to set her up for this request. There were several steps. She would go to see Boaz at the end of the harvest when he would be overnighting on the threshing floor to protect his crops from thieves at night. Ruth was instructed to wait until Boaz was done eating and drinking. Then, when he was lying down, Ruth was supposed to uncover his feet and lie down as well. In that day and age, this was a sign of total submission and a clear indication of Ruth's petition for marriage. It's worth noting that this was not considered an improper advance, though. Ruth could do it and retain her class and dignity. Nobody would question her morals. So Ruth did exactly what Naomi told her to do, and it worked. Boaz woke up at midnight, shocked to notice a woman at his feet. I am your servant, Ruth, said Naomi's devoted daughter-in-law. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. This phrase essentially meant, I am a widow, take me as your wife. Again, Ruth was being bold, but not forward. She was within her rights to make this courageous ask. She was intentional, but did not come across as desperate. Already impressed with Ruth and convinced of her quality and character, Boaz expressed his willingness to marry her, provided he could clear one hurdle. There was technically one relative that was closer kinsman to Naomi and Ruth. Boaz was in a tricky situation because he could not carry out his right as guardian redeemer without first making sure this other man relinquished his rights. Now it was Boaz's turn to get strategic. He was determined to do everything right in the moral way, by the book. Nobody was going to accuse him of bending the rules. He wasted no time. That same day, he headed for the city gate, rounded up 10 witnesses and approached the closer kingsman, explaining the situation. As part of the custom, the closer kingsman had the right to buy land of Naomi's family that had been sold. At first, the kingsman agreed to do so. But Boaz added that he also had the responsibility to marry Ruth and produce children to perpetuate Elimelech's family name. Fortunately for Boaz, this was not something the kingsman was willing to do. So according to the custom of the time, he removed his sandal and gave it to Boaz, showing that a valid exchange had taken place. The witnesses then blessed the marriage of Boaz and Ruth, done and dusted. The hand of God had clearly been at work in this romance. God had been the ultimate matchmaker. He had blessed Boaz with a wonderful, hardworking, and principled wife. And Ruth and Naomi were now under the protection of Boaz and would no longer have to worry about survival. If there ever was a happily ever after romantic ending to a Bible romance story, this was it. People have clung to the story of this beautiful, true romance for thousands of years, inspired by the incredible loyalty of the Bible hero Ruth that was so richly rewarded by God. 
in today's society that is ever more jaded when it comes to love, it is refreshing to be reminded of Ruth's story. In a world where more and more people are discarding marriage as a relic of the past, the union of Boaz and Ruth shows the beautiful possibilities for love when God is at the center of a relationship. Their marriage shows how important it is not to cut corners or settle for something God cannot bless. It took incredible faith to do what Ruth did. While her story is a romantic masterpiece with the benefit of hindsight, there was no way she could have dedicated such a wonderful outcome back in Moab. Back then, she just knew it was the right thing to do to help Naomi. It's not like Ruth could have fired up a dating app and swiped through romantic possibilities before she decided to follow Naomi to Bethlehem. She was willing to do the right thing, even if it meant she was destined to live life as a widow, doing back-breaking, dusty fieldwork just to survive. Ruth could have taken the easier way out, like her sister-in-law, who stayed behind in Moab, but she didn't. And that's what made all the difference. Are you facing a big decision in your life right now? Does the future seem unclear? Do you feel convinced you should do something that could be really, really hard? Allow the story of Ruth to encourage you. Look at how God rewarded her faithfulness and know that the same God is ready and willing to bless your life in a way that may never, never have seemed to you possible. More importantly, remember not to compromise. Don't be nearsighted. Don't lose your moral compass just because things are tough and the road ahead is steep. If you hang in there and embrace God's leading, He will reward you in a beautiful way. You don't want to miss out on the beautiful future God has in store for you. Ruth dared to take a leap of faith when it mattered. God blessed her and her descendants for generations to come. The first child of Ruth and Boaz was Obed. The amazing thing about this is that Obed was the father of Jesse, who was the father of David, who was destined to be Israel's greatest king. This amazing Bible hero had shown loyalty, grit, and dedication. God honored Ruth's commitment and chose her to be a special part of his people's future. When Jesus, the Messiah of the world, was born, his bloodline came from the house of David, whose great-grandmother was the amazing foreigner Ruth. As we celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas, we are reminded through the story of Ruth, his Gentile ancestor, that absolutely everyone, regardless of nationality or family tree, is welcomed into the family of God through the sacrifice of Jesus, the ultimate Redeemer. Will you take Jesus up on his invitation? It's a leap of faith that will change everything.